Hello, uh, and welcome to this tutorial about how to find conditional probabilities and how to build contingency tables using Excel. Uh, so in this example, I have a bunch of data. Uh, it's basically about all the times that I visited the gym that I go to. Uh, over a certain time span. Looks like the first date is February 22nd, 2019 to April 12th, 2021. That's when I actually created this spreadsheet. Uh, and so you see there's the date, there's the day, day of the week, there's the teacher, and there's the time. And so you might have questions like what's the most common time or who's the most common instructor that I've had, or even going deeper in it, like if I go on a Monday, who would my most likely instructor be? Or if I go on Friday, what time am I most likely to go? Because you know what day of the week is coming up. And so you might be interested in like, how likely am I to work out that day? What teacher might I have? What time might I go? And so, we can find this in Excel. Now you could sort of go through entry by entry on your own, but as you see, there's 430 entries. So it takes up to row 431, but the first row is just the titles. So what we're going to want to do is to insert, and we will go to something called a pivot table. Uh, and so the pivot table will go from will go from a one to d four hundred and thirty one because we saw it went to row four thirty one so that makes our columns a through d and our rows one through four hundred and thirty one um, and then let's actually make a new worksheet so that it's not like on top of this um, and we'll just hit OK. And so now we have our pivot table. Now the pivot table doesn't have anything in it yet, but we can work with this. So let's say that what I'm interested in are the different day and time combinations. Um, and then the sigma values well, let's see how many times we have for each day. All right, and so we see the time, we have see the day. Now, I kind of like to have day in the rows and times in the columns. I just think that that's a little bit more intuitive, um, and that's fine. We can just swap these, and there we go. Or we could even have them together if we want every single day time combination. Uh, which may be more useful if we're dealing with multi more variables than that. And so now we have a contingency table. And in the sigma values, for now we just have it counting. But if you wanted to, um, we could actually do other things. Like if we want to have like an average or a sum or a max or a min. These are really useful when we're working with numerical data. But in this case, since we just have categorical data, we're going to leave it with count. All right. And so now we can ask questions related to conditional probabilities or overall probabilities. So something like what proportion uh, of my attendance was on Tuesday? Well, I attended 77 Tuesday classes out of 430 classes total. So that would be 77 over 430. Or something like, um, given that a class was on a Wednesday that I attended, How likely was it that I attended 
at we'll say 9 a.m. All right. Well, for this, I can just look at the Wednesday column now, and I see okay. On Wednesday, I attended 48 times. And of those 48 times that I attended, 14 of them were at 9 a.m. So I can do 14 out of 48. And so that's one way that I can answer this question using the contingency table, just looking at days and times. But there's other ways I could look at this as well. For instance, I could grab the day and make that a filter. And then in this case, instead of it being a row variable, I can actually go and look at, I just want Wednesday classes. And boom, now the data sheet removes everything that was not a Wednesday class. And so we see the same thing here, 14, out of 48 classes on a Wednesday were attended, and so at 9 a.m. And so again, we get that conditional probability. And so that's actually the core of what a conditional probability means, is it's basically if you filter to only the conditions that meet whatever you are given, what would be the probability among those times? Um, and so that's what this ends up being, 14 out of 48. All right, so I'm going to move the day back to the rows. Um, because we, the great thing about Excel is that you can even do filters on a third variable. Like I could take teacher. Um, so let's say that I only want to look at the times where Dixon Troyer was my instructor. All right, so Dixon Troyer was my instructor 42 times. And so now we're just treating the population as given that Dixon Troyer was my instructor. And then we could say, well, what's the probability that the class was on a Wednesday? six out of 42, or that it was on a Friday, 15 out of 42. Um, and so you can really play around with these pivot tables because um, you can get rows and columns. We can say something like, given that Dixon Troyer was my instructor, right? so given that Dixon Troyer was my instructor, what is the probability that um, the class was on a Friday at 5 p.m.? All right. So in this case, we see, OK. So given that Dixon Troyer was my instructor, there are 42 such classes. Well, the class was on a Friday at 5 p.m. exactly nine of those 42 times. And so it's just nine out of 42. And so, yeah. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate um, that Excel sometimes auto formats this. So I should probably say equals nine divided by 42. Well, fine. It looks like that cell is now has a date, but it's 21%. All right. So not sure how useful this is going to be for you personally, um, but I found pivot tables to be quite useful if you're looking at large sets of data and you want to see how different categories interact with each other and be able to find conditional probabilities uh, when you have something given something else. And just as one other little note, wherever it's blank just means that there's no data there. So you could, if you wanted to, fill in zeros. You can't actually type a zero in. You can't change it, but um, it can be noted that they're just zeros. All right, so hope you all have a great day and be on the lookout for more of my videos in the future.